So we all know if there's some kind of emergency, we call 911, right? But what really happens when we dial those three numbers? Is it just like the movies and TV? 911, where's your emergency? Here we go. Here we go. Here they are. We went to the Elgin Police Department in Elgin, Illinois to find out. And the truth is, it's a lot more complicated than I thought. Elgin 911, what is the address emergency? My name is Erin Murphy and I am a dispatcher for Elgin Police and Fire Department. Okay, what's the address? Location. Location, location, location. You dial 911, the first thing we always ask is what the address of the emergency is, because that is the most important thing. Because even if that is the only thing that you can get out before the phone disconnects or before the battery on the cell phone dies, at least we have somewhere to start. Okay, so now that is a call that I can't call back because it's a disconnected cell phone. Luckily I have a phase two on it, so I'll have, at least I have an area where I can send people. When you do call from a cell phone, we do not know exactly where you are, because if you dial 911 from a cell phone, it's not like a landline where an address automatically shows up. There are coordinates, but they are not always accurate. Sometimes it can be as far as 3,000 meters away from where you actually are. The next thing we're going to ask you is the nature of your complaint. What's going on? So we want to know who, what, of course where, why. People believe that they can just call 911 and, and the police are automatically just going to respond with absolutely no information. And we do, but we, we'd like to know, have an idea of what's going on. What is it that we are, are responding to? What are we going to walk into? What might we expect? These operators have to stay calm under intense pressure. Sometimes callers might not understand why they're asking all the questions and become frustrated with the operator. All of our questions that we're asking you is not going to delay the responders coming to you. It's just a way for us to get all safety information to the officers that will get there. So let's say you dial 911. While you're talking to the operator, they're passing your information along to another operator who is simultaneously passing that vital information to the right people who can help. 102, get the call. Which, as a caller, might seem frustrating, like, hey, why are you not just sending someone out? But it's really done this way to be the most efficient and helpful. A lot of people want to interrupt us or yell at us, sometimes even hang up on us, not wanting to give us the information. For instance, I had a lady call a couple years ago. She was missing a child, and she kept yelling at me, saying, just get somebody here, just get somebody here but I was trying to ask for the description of her child. And she would not, she hung up on me, I tried calling her back. Finally, I got her on the phone, I'm like, ma'am, it's very important that you give me this information because if officers are on the way and they pass him, they're not gonna know it's him unless you give me the description and I can relay it to them. You're giving us the entire story that we don't know anything about. So the more you can give us, the better able the officers are and the medical personnel are to help everybody that's out there. Although they're on a, on a phone line on the other side of the call, you know, they can also you know, feel the intensity of that call. These dedicated telecommunicators really enjoy their work. They perform a vital public service that helps keep our community safe and first responders could not do their jobs without them. So hopefully you won't have to dial 911, but if you do, know that you have dedicated professionals waiting to help you in your time of need. Hello, Elgin 911. 